The title of our presentation is Making a Mesolithic Dugout Canoe, Testing the Efficacy of Bone, Antler and Flint Tools. In 1997, excavations at the late Mesolithic site of Hardingsveld Giesendam de Bruin, near Rotterdam, revealed a dugout canoe made of lime wood that could be dated between circa 5400 and 5000 Cal BC. The vessel was well preserved and its shape and measurements could be established. It was five and a half meter long and between 42 and 49 centimeters wide. The manufacturing traces are somewhat concave, suggesting the use of a bone edge or chisel. In fact, microanalysis of a sample of bone and antler tools from the site has revealed traces of woodworking on some of the bone edges made of metapodia of aurochs and red deer. No large flint woodworking tools were encountered at, at the site. The aim of our experiment was to explore the production process, the sequence of technical steps, the tools used and the labor involved. Another objective was to test the efficacy of the bone and antler tools and compare this to, a very, to that of a very common Mesolithic flint tool, the trenchet axe. We also used wedges made of wood and red deer antler, as well as wooden hammers. We differentiated between the unskilled students and the two expert woodworkers involved, Leo Wolterbeek and Diederik Pomstra. The tools marked with black tape were used by the expert woodworkers, the tools with gray tape by our students. We obtained a lime tree that was blown over in a storm the previous year, but that was still in good condition. As the archaeological dugout did not show manufacturing traces on the outside of the boards, we soaked the log so that we could peel off the bark. This was easy. Splitting the log was another story. First, the groove was made with an antler chisel, after which wooden wedges were driven into the wood. This took almost a complete day of hard work, partially due to some very large knots at one end of the log. We were eventually forced to cut the troublesome part off, leaving us with a log of 4.3 meters long. Because we wanted to compare the efficacy of the different chopping tools, we divided the log in sections of 60 centimeters. Grooves were then chopped across the grain of the wood to a depth of about 5 centimeters. We measured the efficacy of the tools by calculating the time it took to chop the grooves, measured in minutes per square centimeter. Each block of wood was then removed by means of wedges. This process was continued until the bottom was about 5 centimeters thick. Then the inner surface was finished with a sharp bone edge. Last, the outside of the bow and stern were shaped. As we were keen to quantify the manufacturing process, the duration each tool was used was noted. It turned out that the bone edge was the most frequently used chopping implement, seen in the table on top. Every tool was given a subjective assessment of its efficacy on a scale of one to five. Both the quantitative and subjective data showed that the bone edges were the most effective, as displayed in the table below. The flint trenchet axes were discarded as ineffective by the expert due to their lightness and vulnerability, but this was less the case with the novices, who were not so concerned about its lightweight and thin handle. In total, it took 35 and a half days of eight hours of tool use to finish the dugout, 20 and, 20 and a half days of student work, 15 days by the expert. Lime wood is quite soft and splits easily. We saw no use for fire in the process of hollowing out the canoe. The large number of knots in lime wood causes some unexpected plunges during splitting, especially towards the end of the process near to the bottom. This could cause problems. It may actually be that repair damage seen in the dugouts of lime are actually repaired manufacturing accidents. The boneheads is frequently broke at the hafted part. Halfing them with a shoulder or threshold made them last substantially longer. It was also interesting that the edges made of old bones were much more durable than those made of fresh bone. The dugout floated very well, easily holds two adults, and is now part of the collection of canoe reconstructions present at the Massamuda Open Air Archaeological Center in Vlaardingen. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>